Welcome to Entertainment Plus. I'm Jan Waldman, and my guest today is Randy Cohen. She's the executive director from the Northeast Animal Shelter in Salem, Massachusetts. Welcome, Randy. Thank you. It's Thank so you good to see me. you. Oh, it's our pleasure. Well, what an exciting place this is. So much going on. Now, how did you get started in this? Actually, my sister started the shelter in really? 1976. And her name is? Cindy Shapiro. Okay. And it was 23 years ago or 24 years ago. I've been here that long. And she asked me if I could come and help with the bookkeeper who was taking time off. And I knew the bookkeeping program, so I said, sure. She said it was only going to be for a few months. <laughs> the famous last words. I never <laughs> left, and she never came back. So I've worked in all different areas uh, and worked my way up to this. Well, you do wonderful work. You really do. It's an important thing. And this is a beautiful shelter because I remember the old shelter. I've been coming here a long time. <laughs> There's no comparison. The last shelter, the old shelter, was in the basement of a veterinary clinic in the back. And we did over 100,000 adoptions from that one little spot. And we had dogs and cats next to each other. And when we moved here, we were told, oh, you don't want to keep them in the same room. So we have all these separate rooms for all the animals. I would think that would be more stressful for dogs and cats, especially if they haven't had that contact. You're right. It probably would be. So when we had a choice, then we made it the way that we thought it would be best. Now, how many adoptions do you do typically a year since you've been here? About 4,400. That's a lot. It's a very lot. And that's dogs and cats. And that's a lot. Of, yeah. That's a lot of animals it getting is. good homes. Yes. So tell me about the process. Someone comes in looking for a cat or a dog. How does that work? Well, the first thing they do is they go walk around in the different rooms and see if there's an animal that they're interested in. And there's a blue card on every cage or run. They bring that up to the front desk and they fill out a form that gives all sorts of information so the adoption council doesn't have to ask lots of questions. It's all right there on the form. And then they'll pull the folder of, for that animal and see what more detailed information, information that we have or online on our database and we'll be able to tell more information about that animal. Mm -hmm. Most of it is usually in the folder. Mm -hmm. oh, that's nice. Yeah, And then they can decide is this the right match between the adoption council saying you know I don't think this is the right one for you and if it is then they'll take them into one of our visiting rooms and they can sit and play with the dog as long as they want. If they decide that's not the right dog for them then they can go and pick out another dog and do the same process until they decide which one is the right one for them. People will just look at a picture of a dog online and say, okay, I want that dog. But it might not be the right dog for them. They might be somebody who wants to just sit and not take walks or exercise and just wants a dog or cat that's just going to cuddle with them. And that dog might not want to do that. It might need somebody who's going to run outside and play with it outdoors and so we have to make sure that it's the right match for them. Now, tell me about this room. I mean, this is really an elaborate uh, layout for cats. And I've had cats, so I know that they would absolutely adore this. It, was it donated, or did you guys buy it, or how did it come about? These were donated to us. The whole There are three rooms. There's another cat community room that holds about six cats. And then there's this one for the nine cats. And then there's one room in between, and that's for a cat that's stressed out and needs to be alone, sometimes with one other cat, if it came in with another cat. And then they need to, um, you know, decide who's going to go into what of which one of the three rooms. These three rooms were donated to us by Canyon Creek Ranch. And they came to us and they said they want to do something for us and saw the cat rooms that we had before and said, we want to renovate what you have here. So they did. They did the whole thing in a week. They had an architect come in and, and decide what they were going to do and then just put it all together. And it was really great. It was very exciting to watch how fast something could be created. And so we've gotten a lot of really good use from here. Now tell me about these, um, these outdoor spaces. They're just they're really nice. The dogs can run free. Is this correct? What they usually do is the people will walk down here and they'll go around the parking lot and then they'll bring them back and they can go off leash. Um, in one of these runs. Or if somebody like this couple over here, they're wanting to adopt a dog, then they can come out here and play with it and run around with it and see if it's what they want. And what we're going to be doing is building another one down there where you can see the white fence. And so this area, once we're ready to move down there, this is going to be taken down and we're building a new part of a building here. So. Oh, and what will you put in the new building? We need more isolation areas. So when dogs come and they're not 
feeling well, there are certain illnesses, we can take one type of illness and put it in one of these isolation rooms, and then all the other dogs that are healthy in that room can go up for adoption. Well, that's nice. That's nice. It, you, you know, the space you need is probably endless. It probably is, but, you know, this is it. I don't, can't imagine going any further. But this will be great when we can do that because right now we have to hold all the dogs back until all of them are healthy. That's what we're doing now. And so once they're all healthy, then they can all go out front for adoption. But until then, we have to hold them. So with the new building and the new rooms, we can take dogs that might have um, Giardia, which most people have heard of, mm -hmm. and it wasn't caught from the sh sending shelter, but we caught it here. And so they can now go into one room that's just for dogs that have the same problem. So it will make it easier to keep all the animals healthy. Well, you know what I've found with animals is that, you know, they're so, they can be quite traumatized by this experience just because it's not what they're used to. And it does take a bit for them to settle down once they, they get to a new home. People will say, oh, that dog is so shy, which is what happened when I adopted a dog. Mm -hmm. She was so shy. I got her home and she was crazy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, once you make the commitment, you should stick with it and learn how to deal with the type of behavior that that animal has. Mm -hmm. I do have an older dog that we got mm -hmm. at 13, and it, it took her, luckily, only one week to acclimate after 13 years with an oh owner who goodness. loved her. That's wonderful. And we slept downstairs with her, and we, <laughs> yeah. we did everything we could. Yeah. But it, it was surprisingly short, but she was a well-adjusted dog to start with, so it wasn't like she yeah. had been um, abused or anything. These animals are not all abused, mm -hmm. but they come from shelter where it's not a great facility mm -hmm. and we don't know where they came from you know they could have just been running the streets and somebody picked them up or they could come from a home that had 10 other animals right we really don't know where they come their background so tell me about some of your other programs what what programs do you have ongoing right now in, with any um, relationships between other shelters and getting dogs we have about 10 different 10 or 12 different shelters that we work with now mm -hmm. and they're from all different states we go as far as california and texas and then the southern states mm -hmm. and we have more than enough just doing it with the 10 or 12 different places that we work with now you must find that you get certain types of dogs from each area california i know you get a lot of chihuahuas and we then do. You, tell me about the different areas. And what, what's, a, what's a typical type of dog you get from these certain areas? Well, from California, they're not just chihuahuas, which is a common breed, but we'll only take a certain amount. And the others are all little dogs. Mm -hmm. Like my dog is 20 pounds. She's not that little. Mm -hmm. And she's from California. I have no idea about her background. We don't get any information on them. Mm -hmm. And so you just work with what you have and accept it. And mm -hmm. um, some of the other states like Texas, where they fly their dogs to us, they all seem to have been temperament tested and vet tested, and, and you know they just seem to be a lot better quality. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, which is great. Yeah. So we know the different places that we do get our animals from. They know what our requirements are. We have a whole protocol that they have to follow, mm -hmm. and they know that that's what it is. Oh, that's good. So we do the best that we can. And we actually never really know what they're mixed with. So we guess at what they, we think they, they look like, and even where they're coming from, it's from a shelter in West Virginia that mm -hmm. does the best to tell us who, what they think they are, um, but sometimes they don't even know. Now, do you encourage people to get the DNA testing done just for fun, or is it expensive? I'm not even sure. It's expensive, but we do have the kits here in case somebody really wants to know. But what difference does it make? You know, it doesn't matter what they're mixed with. If you love it, you love it. And who cares what type it is? Yes, I, I agree. But it's kind of fun sometimes to know, especially when you think it's one thing and then find out it's a, a wolf. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, you must have a lot of nice stories that, that have come out of this, this rescue shelter. And uh, can you think of any to share? The one story that I know that was wonderful that happened yesterday, we had a dog named Gabe. Gabe has been here since May, and he started off as a puppy. But he was a feisty puppy, and so a lot of people didn't want him. And we kept bringing him to get dog to a dog trainer, mm -hmm. and the dog trainer said, oh, he's a wonderful dog, and send him back to us. And it was back and forth for a long time until we found the right person who wanted to deal with the problems this dog had. And yesterday we found it, and they came and adopted him. And that's a good story. From May. That's a long time. It's a long time to be yeah. here. It is. But, th but it had a good ending. It so had a wonderful ending. And most of our dogs do not stay here that long. But we'll do whatever we have to do 
to make sure that they're adoptable. Mm -hmm. Now this morning you had a little um, interesting program where you were promoting the cats. Can you tell me about that program? Yeah, we had a kitten shower. <laughs> and so we had all these kittens that all came from West Virginia. And there were so many of them, and we wanted to save all their lives. So we had this kitten shower so people could come. They could bring a gift for the kittens mm -hmm. or a cat, and then they could adopt. And we had special food out front for the people to come and eat while they were waiting for a counselor to work with them. Mm -hmm. So and it was I, very I exciting. there were quite a few names on the board, which, which means yeah. they've been adopted. Yes. So that was a yeah. nice thing today. We started that on the board so that people would know how many we've done, the adoption councils mm -hmm. mainly that they can look at that, or people who come in and say, oh, I want this dog or I want this cat, and they look at the board, oh, no, it was already adopted. Mm -hmm. Because we can't keep up constantly on our website, so we do the best that we can. You have how many staff and how many volunteers, would you say, approximately? We have about 60 staff and about 350 volunteers. That's nice. And they rotate through and do the shifts and... Yep. Now, do you have someone stay overnight, or do you have them come in at night, or do you just let the animals rest at we night? We just let the animals rest mm -hmm. at night. The only time we'll have somebody stay here is if we have a sick animal, mm -hmm. and the animal cannot go to a vet clinic for some reason. Maybe it got sick when it was closing time at the vet, or, or it's something that we could take care of. So we've had people who have slept over here on mattresses on the floor <laughs> um, just to be here to That's take nice. care of the animal. Now, you do special programs throughout the year, and I know at Christmas time, I think Santa comes and you take photographs. <laughs> People bring their animals to sit with Santa mm, and nice. have pictures taken. Oh, that's nice. And yeah. is that a popular event? Very popular, mm -hmm. yeah. So they bring it in, they pay a certain fee and get their photograph, yeah, and then it, it just benefits the it's shelter. It's $8 for a picture. That's nice. Um, and... Most people just give us a little bit more than that, which is very exciting. And we have gifts that we give out to them when they come. Mm -hmm. That's nice. We also have birthday parties in there, which is really successful. I did see that. And those, yeah. are, those have been successful? Very successful, yes. And you have a limit on age. The children have to be over five, I think right. it was. And yes. Then and no more than 15, but <laughs> because just we, usually, <laughs> we usually end up with more than that. Um, and, yeah, it's and the fun. kids, and then they, see, I've seen this, they donate their, they donate to the, the, the shelter at that a time? A lot of them do mm -hmm. that. A lot of them bring, nice. bring in different things for the shelter, for the animals to use. Mm -hmm. And people will just give us, you know, whether it's newspapers or if it's dog collars or whatever, we want it here. Mm -hmm. That's nice. And we can use everything. You know, another thing that I will, I'll talk about is what children do for us. Oh, yes, please do. Yeah, not only for the birthday parties and trying to get their friends to all donate something to us. Mm -hmm. A lot of the kids want to raise money for us or collect items for us and they'll set up something in their school or they'll go around to their neighborhood and do it and we had I just heard the story that there was a, a young child who wanted to raise money for us and collected stones and rocks and went <laughs> knocking on doors and asking people to donate <laughs> and he, they would get a stone or a rock <laughs> yeah and they did it I well, forget yeah, how much they collected, but they collected a good amount. That's really cute. Isn't it's, that cute? They had to come cute. up, think of something, and that's what they did. We just also had somebody who did a birthday party. Mm -hmm. She wanted to raise money for us. Mm -hmm. So she had invited all of her friends and parents' friends and mm -hmm. went around the neighborhood and collected a lot of money for good. us. Good. So it isn't, doesn't have to just be money. It can be items as well. That's nice. Yeah. That's but nice getting that you take both. kids involved is wonderful. Yes. Learning philanthropy at an early yes. age is really important. It is. It is it is good to give back, and, and, and yeah. it's good to, especially a, a local shelter like this, which is actually not even a local shelter. You really service the entire, uh, a large area, don't you? People do. come from All New quite England. a distance. Yeah. Yes. I do know that because when you advertise, you also do include all you know New England. Mm -hmm. We do You're one of the big ones. So, one of them. Yes, yeah. we are. Yes. Yeah, it's so very exciting. I do know. I have seen the newsletter before, and you do ask for things you need. Can you tell everyone what things that you constantly are in need of and would love to be donated? We always need um, dog toys or cat toys. Um, we always need canned food, but good quality canned food. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing to do is to go onto our website, which is NEAS.org, and we have a things we need list. Mm -hmm. And so that's a good thing to do. And I've seen it from paper towels to right. towels to blankets to yeah. just a, a huge variety everything, right. of everything. Yeah. So I know my girls and I, over the years, we've uh, brought bags and bags of towels from a local pool 
at the end of the year when they're all left and lost and found. Oh, that's great. So we brought in like, yeah. I think, hundreds of towels. Oh, that's a few wonderful. Years. That's <laughs> really helpful. Yes, and they were very appreciative yeah. here. So we've done that. You know, it's been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And if you could just tell our audience how we can find you. We're at Northeast Animal Shelter. We're at 347 Highland Avenue, which is Route 107 in Salem, Mass. And our website is neas.org. Mm-hmm. Our telephone number is 978-745-9888. Somebody will answer the phone usually, or just be patient because we have one person answering the phone. So just give it a try or just come down and visit. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people just come and look around and they're mm-hmm. not, they don't want to adopt an animal. And that's okay. Yeah. They can just come and visit and then they can go tell their friends who might want to adopt to come and visit. <laughs> that's what my family does. We come by, we just browse around, bring some donations, and then leave. <laughs> <So> <laughs> that's we, great. <laughs> we love to do that. That's good. So. Whatever we can do for people to know that we're here, and even if they want to just visit and not adopt, it's okay with us. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much, Randy. It has been a pleasure to come here and to see the animals and to visit with you and get the word out for you guys. Thank so. you. Well, we really appreciate thank it. You. It's great. Thank you from Entertainment Plus. I'm Jan Waldman, and look us up on Facebook. <laughs>